Hi there, my name is Willem and today I'm going to make a prediction. No matter what country you live in, during and after the corona crisis, people in the press and people on social media are going to criticize the way their government handled COVID-19. Personally, I don't think all this critique is justified. But before you turn into a keyboard warrior who fills the comment section with caps lock insults, I'm going to add a little disclaimer. I'm not saying that your government didn't make any mistakes at all because some politicians truly are morons. I just think that we should be a bit more nuanced in our criticism. Because after something has happened, it's always easy to look back to spot the mistakes that were made and to act like we saw it all coming. This is something that people do. Moreover, this is something that everyone does, including you. So today I'm going to talk about the hindsight bias, what it does and why it happens. Welcome to Brains Applied. The hindsight bias was first discovered in the 70s when scientists of the University of Jerusalem decided to conduct an experiment. It was right before capitalist president Nixon visited China and comrade Brezhnev of the Soviet Union. Students at that university were asked to fill in a survey in which they had to estimate the probability of several events that could happen during President Nixon's trip. Events such as Nixon meeting with Mao Zedong or a group of Soviet Jews being arrested while attempting to speak with President Nixon. Because apparently Nixon and Russian Jews had some business going on. Anyways, a few weeks after Nixon's trip, the researchers returned and they were like Hey dudes, do you remember that questionnaire of a few weeks ago? Because we do have some extra questions. For each single event, they asked participants whether they thought the event hadn't occurred, whether it occurred and was publicized in the press, whether it occurred and wasn't publicized, or whether they just didn't know the answer. And accordingly, they asked the participants what their original probability estimation was. Now if you map the estimated probability of before the event and the estimated probability as you remembered after the event on a graph, you would expect them to be on a straight line, right? But in reality, surprise surprise, people's estimated probability that an event would occur suddenly increased for events of which participants thought they had happened and decreased for events that didn't happen. And it doesn't just happen there. It also happened after the 2008 recession, after 9-11. And one study found that the hindsight bias frequently occurs on Wikipedia pages about disasters. And it's not a mental handicap that Wikipedia authors have. It happens amongst diplomats, CEOs, politicians, physicians and people on social media. Now, if you're wondering, is the hindsight bias that bad? Yes, because it makes us the victim of psychological myopia. Psychological myopia, just like regular myopia, allows us to see only the things that are closest to us. Or in this case, when we talk about an event, the explanation that is most obvious. And while we focus on this explanation, we fail to dig deeper and therefore we miss other viable explanations. As a result of that, we can draw the wrong conclusion and we might miss dangerous factors and people might get the blame for something they couldn't do anything about. But the hindsight bias can also make people overconfident in their skills to make predictions, up to the point where it becomes dangerous. One study, for example, found that investment bankers who show greater hindsight bias earn less than bankers who learn from their mistakes and who show less hindsight bias. But the major question of this video is obviously why? Science has proven that there are different kinds of variables that have an influence on your hindsight bias. For example, we 
Human beings are not always very good at remembering how we felt about something before it happened, because we didn't think about it back then. So instead we start to rely on the information that we currently have available. On top of that, it turns out that when we learn something new, we selectively activate related information in our memory, while ignoring inconsistent information. In one study, for example, participants had to read a description of a date. Half of the participants, however, had a slightly altered scenario in which the dates ended with a rape scenario. A week after the first session, participants were interviewed and they were asked to talk about the details of the story. And the result showed that participants' reconstruction of the entire date was quite different depending on which ending they had read. To make it even worse, we don't like random events. So when something happens, we try to create a story, an explanation. That's for example why we invented gods and religion to explain life, death and a billion other things. And while looking for an explanation, we have a tendency to oversimplify the causes and consequences of a story and we tend to neglect the role of luck and randomness. And that's why God works in mysterious ways. And the easier it is to come to a conclusion, the greater people's hindsight bias will be. Or in other words, the more obvious your explanation seems to be, the less open you are to other explanations or the role of randomness. And last but not least, everyone has an ego and it's a pity but most of them are very fragile. As such, we often try to protect ourselves while blaming others. Studies have shown that when we are in control of a situation where something went wrong, like our non-existing love life or work, we are more likely to claim that the things which happened couldn't be predicted in any way and we definitely weren't able to do something about it. However, when we are mere bystanders, like during the corona crisis or during elections, we all of a sudden tend to claim that the outcome could be foreseen and that every dumbass could have expected the things that happened. Even though we probably would have made exactly the same mistakes. And that's why you probably shouldn't start a social media war against politicians that you don't like. Instead, you can use your time in a more productive way. For example, by liking this video and by pressing the subscribe button and the notification bell, so you receive a 100% free notification next time when I upload a new video. Because with your support, I'll keep making videos. And I will see you guys later.